In 1991, NASA launched the Batsy satellite. Equipped with state-of-the-art detectors, it was going to study the bursts in detail for the first time. But as the data came in, a disturbing picture began to emerge. What they'd expected was that the bursts would line up with the galactic plane, meaning they were coming from within our own galaxy. The first uh, dozen or so gamma ray bursts weren't lining up with the, the galaxy. The next dozen or so also weren't lining up with the galaxy, but they happened to be randomly distributed throughout the sky. Once again, the first thoughts of the scientists were that someone must have made a mistake. I think the immediate reaction was perhaps a little bit of disbelief, that they must be doing something wrong. And of course, ourselves, we were worried about that and, and, and worried about it every night when we <laughs> tried to sleep. And yet, as every day went by, more and more bursts appeared all over the sky. We said, well, uh, this is going to cause a lot of waves, but um, we better go public with this announcement that it looks like the gamma ray bursts are uniformly distributed throughout the sky. There was now no doubt. Paczynski had been right all along. I think that was professionally the most joyous moment in my life because all of a sudden I realized that something which was very risky, which could work either way, turned out my way. So of course I was very, very happy. But Paczynski's triumph threatened to plunge science into chaos. If the bursts were coming from beyond our galaxy, then they had to be caused by something far bigger than science could explain. If they were really coming from distant galaxies, it was a phenomenon unlike anything we've seen before. The amount of energy release uh, the rate of energy release was greater than uh, anyone had ever seen before in any other form. And, and the details of how you got that, uh, nobody could understand how that could be. It was, it was pressing the, the limits of our understanding. It was now clear that these explosions were of an almost inconceivable size. So big, in fact, that they might even be violating Einstein's fundamental law, E equals mc squared. And that was meant to be impossible.